Hello there. When you listen to Remainers talk about the EU and the UK, you could be forgiven for thinking that they revel in our national weaknesses. We are constantly being told by Remain campaigners that without the EU, the United Kingdom would no longer function. In fact, I hear an almost triumphal sound in their voices as they do our nation down as too weak and insignificant to be able to look after itself. They revel, yes, revel, in their belief that we must be assimilated or perish. And one of the arguments they use is access to nuclear medicine. As part of Brexit, we are leaving the EU and Euratom. Now, Euratom did not start as part of the EU. It was, and still is, technically outside the EU. But Euratom is coming more and more under EU influence, and it has its own freedom of movement of nuclear workers within the Euratom agreement as well. So when triggering the Article 50 process, it was decided that the UK would also sever links with Euratom. But Remainers point to us leaving Euratom and claim that doing so could stop us importing nuclear isotopes for the detection and cure of cancer, although the government does deny this. But, as I believe over 80% of the isotopes used are imported using the Euratom-based procedures, you could be sucked into thinking that the EU is wonderful and we have to stay in it. But when you dig beneath the surface, you start to realise that all is not as it seems. Let's start with the main elements, technetium-99 or TC-99 and molybdenum-99 or MO-99. The first and main of these, TC-99, has a half-life of just six hours. So an element called a TC-99 generator is used to transport it from the manufacturer to the hospital. And the TC-99 generator is MO-99. But MO99 has a half-life of only 66 hours itself. That means that whatever you use requires fast and efficient transport from maker to user, because you cannot stockpile them. And this is where the Remainers come in and say that we must stay in the EU to ensure that the supply and transport of nuclear medicines are preserved. But there are major problems with that simplistic argument. According to a recent report, 60 to 70% of the MO99 produced globally is made using non-power research reactors. And most MO99 is supplied by Australia, Belgium, Netherlands and South Africa, with the US and Russia just starting to come online as suppliers. And in most cases, the MO99 supply comes from ageing reactors that have long and sometimes unexpected shutdowns. In 2009 and 2010, this led to shortages, with Hitachi reporting that a serious supply crunch of MO99 has occurred worldwide when the long-term shutdown of the research reactor with the largest production coincided with the long disruption in air traffic due to the Icelandic volcanic eruption in April 2010. And things aren't getting any better. As a House of Parliament post note says, most research reactors that produce MO99 were built in the 1950s and 60s and are approaching the end of their lifespans, increasing the length of shutdowns for routine maintenance and the likelihood of unplanned outages. Investment in new facilities has been limited. And as I understand it, the UK has no research reactors capable of producing MO99. The vital component of TC99 can be made in cyclotrons, but the UK doesn't have powerful enough units to do this. Talk about consecutive failure of governments. And the post note also points to the vulnerabilities in the current Euratom supply chain that the Remainers so glory in, saying, in 2008, the closure of the Channel Tunnel after a fire led to a short-term shortage of MO99, and industrial action in Calais in 2015 also delayed deliveries. Extending transport routes, for example, importing from Australia, also reduces the amount of MO99 left as it decays. So, 
Does a limited investment and having long, unreliable supply chains for a vital element with a lower sh shelf life than a strawberry sound sensible to you? It sounds like an atrocious failure by politicians over decades to me. Oh, and don't forget all those greenies who campaign against nuclear fission as well. Our politicians past and present have put the people of the UK into the position where we are reliant on other countries to invest, supply and transport this stuff to us. And to do the right thing and get our own domestic supply up and running would, according to the Parliament Post note, only take about £250 to £400 million. Pounds. But crucially, it would also take 10 years to do it. The UK was the first to bring a commercial nuclear power reactor online. How low have we sunk? So don't you think we should be investing that 250 to 400 million pounds as well as the 10 years and get going on a long-term strategy to becoming self-reliant where nuclear medicines are concerned? It would also surely take the UK back to the forefront of this important technological area. Anyway, what do you think? Please share and comment and thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.